I really don't know. Okay. Um, and then the other counter protest group, whether they will show up or not, I don't know either. So, but I have been getting some pretty hateful messages and emails since this week. So I think. Well, You know, like I, at the end, we actually want to promote this you know, like open discussion by committing members of what we can do going forward just to ensure the safety. So I'm, I'm not sure like going to the other area actually help because they are going to open anyways. Sure. So we depend. I, my current plan is to stay here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. So if you have any concerns or issues, let me know. Yeah, thanks. I'll, thanks be, for I'll be in the area. All yeah, right. I think yeah. yeah. We even after this, we need to communicate uh, about like we actually have a proposal for the public safety plan that we want to work out with Acadia and the police and also the Hamish County Sheriff. Mm -hmm. I think that is needed to ensure the safety of the surrounding area, and then we will get involved. And also, who in the Liu Department yeah. that we can talk to? Yeah, we can uh, talk about that. Yeah, we always want to be involved in yeah. you know making sure everyone's safe. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Alright, thanks. See you later. Hi. Oh, my pleasure. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't run across it much, but yeah, I just. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think you know, like we will need to just keep working, like addressing any of the safety concerns, and then see what we can do, and also work long term with the city officials and even the state officials to fix the problems that we found. And that's part of the message I want to focus on today, right? Um, this is not the end. We, we still, because you know, this is our home. We want to make sure it's safe. That's our ultimate goal, right? right. Children sure. are safe. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's, 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 that's the ultimate goal. Like. Um, Let's see how many people show up. I, I oh, no. How do you how do you do that? I mean, every day. I mean. We walk the street. I mean, we're only a half mile from here. We walk to go Vivian, let me get them over here. I don't like the idea. I want to me. I want to help people get them off. All of the way off. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hey folks, can I do some speeches here in a minute? Just get your heads up and come over here. No. Better now, huh? <laughs> 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 
you already signed up? I already signed up. Yeah, okay, cool. I, I gave my email. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Oh, I'm not going to rock. Yeah, I do all the games. I did it. Do you sound good? Um, I'm sure I recall I recall the news that uh, the DOH approved a KDS uh, license despite our effort. Um, but thank you everyone for coming. This is not yet sharing some of the plans going forward. Uh, but we'll get started with the speakers first. At first, um, we want to read the statement from New York City Council President Shannon Sessions, who could not be here today, but sent a statement for support. So Rachel or Walter will read it. My statement from Linwood City Council President Shanna Sessions. I'm sorry I cannot be here in person with you today. Thank you for Vivian Dong, Faith Linwood, and other families who have got involved to help protect our kids. We're saddened that the state believes Acadia has accomplished all their requirements and given their give them their lessons. Lessons. We disagree and will continue working with the state's legislature, legislature to get wording in the code changed so not to allow this in future. While most of us agree we should have a, a methadone treatment program in Linwood to help with the um, opioid crisis, we still don't think it's safe next to the Boys and Girls Club. Also, we don't believe Acadia has done its due diligence with requirements of working with city legislature. The public and the most critically, they still don't have a safety plan with both of our LPC and um, SCSO. This is the most disappointing. We city council, working with city administrators, will now start the process to plan our own safety plan including LPD coordinating with Snohomish County Sheriff's Office. Also, we'll be looking into adjusting our city's rules, policies, accordions to be able to enforce this ourselves, since the state won't. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Council President Sessions. And next, um, council member first could not be here today uh, because of his leg injury, but he wanted to send a statement for support as well. My name is Pam Hurst. I have the privilege of well, well, so so teach me how to do it. My name is Pam Hurst, and I have the pleasure of being the wife of Council Member George Hurst. Closer to your mouth. Do I have to say my name again? Yes. Pam Hurst, yeah. H-U-R-S-T. And I have the privilege of being the wife of Council Member George Hurst, who I'm sad to say is at home right now with a broken leg in three pieces, and he is not here, so I get to be. I'm also a, a resident of City of Linwood and have been for over 35 years. I raised, we raised our family here. I currently am on the Human Services Commission, not as a representative of that commission, but as someone who cares about all people in our community. So I would call myself a peacemaker. Let's look at how to move forward. This is my husband's statement. Thank you all for your willingness to come out and continue your advocacy. Do you hear me or not? Yes. yes. Disappointment about the process that has allowed this clinic to be approved without true public input by the City Planning Department and the State Department of Health. We will work together to change this process. The City Council can change city codes and zones, but the State Legislature will have to be a willing partner to reform the State Department of Health. This is our long-term goal. The immediate action that has to begin this week is to 
create a success and safety plan that includes the neighborhood, Acadia, the city council, the mayor, then the police, and the Tohoma County Sheriff. I have heard you spoke, I have heard you as you spoke at city council meetings and as you have gathered at this site. You are an important part of the Linwood community. We now must include the 300 clients of this clinic as part of the same community. I am committed to making sure your voice is heard as we find ways to fight the epidemic of drug addiction in our region. Thank you. Signed by George Hurst, a member of the Humphrey Council. Thank you, George, uh, Council Member first. And next we have uh, Council Member Smith. Are you here? Thank you. Cool glasses. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming out. And uh, I want to start with a couple of apologies. Number one, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to leave early because I've got a commitment. I've got a show. I do a show for seniors. Got to be leaving here. Minutes. Number two, apologize for not being here in person last week. This my four-year-old and six-year-old grandchildren in Denver were more important. I was down there, but I was thinking about you, and I appreciate that all of you showed up last week. This battle is not over. This battle is continuing and will continue because it is expected that because it's going to, this is going to open up tomorrow, that you're all going to be disappointed and then just go away. Let's not do that. There might not be gatherings every week, but we're going to have to continue monitoring what they're doing, working with the state, working with the city. The administration should have let us know about this. They knew in March. The administration knew about this in March. The city council never heard about this until mid-December. End of December, there was that bogus public hearing where they didn't tell us anything. We just got to... to tell them what we thought. In January, it was all approved. Tomorrow it opens up. That doesn't seem to be a very open process to me. In fact, I think that we need, from the state level, we need to change that. Number two, the more we learn about this, this, the, the methadone clinics is a good start if they're put in the right place, but they have to, we need to change the laws where we're getting people off of this, this drug. We are basically, the federal government pays for Acadia to get people off the street, onto methadone, and these people on methadone, some are on for decades. This came from the Acadia's mouth, that they're on for decades. We need to change that. And we need to be able to make sure that we all are more aware of what's going on and we're working together, not just told, no, just shut up and do what we tell you. That doesn't work for me. I got too much of an ego. I'm getting too old. I got too much of an ego all my, all my life. So let's go ahead and continue this battle. I want to, and finally, as I before I leave, I want to thank Vivian, who has been absolutely. Woo! 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 She told me the other day she's tired. <laughs> I don't know why she's tired. This is exciting. We need to take this battle on. But Vivian, thank you very much for everything that you do, and thank all of you for coming out. People that I've never met before, I appreciate meeting and talking to the people here that do care and that have not just the same opinions, but it's, we can have discussions. So thank you all for coming out. Give me back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Uh, chapter. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, okay, now I, I, up, up your mouth. Hi there. My name's Debbie Blodgett, and I am on the executive board for Moms for Liberty King County. I am a Snohomish County resident, but my school district is in it, it, it's in both Snohomish and King County. So I'm here today. Vivian has asked me to come. I was chairman of the Snohomish County Republican Party for four years, and I know what it is to be an activist. And I have looked at what Vivian has done 
to encourage everybody in this community to come out and fight for something that she believes in. And I think we should all believe in something as important as this for our children. I know that the laws um, right now don't include clinics like this, but when you look at the laws that say that marijuana dispensaries have to be, what is it, 500 feet or a thousand feet away from a school or any place where children are congregating, this should be under the same law. This, and that's where we need to change the legislature. Absolutely. So I know that uh, with Moms for Liberty, we fight for kids in our schools. We fight for the curriculum. We fight for uh, parental rights. And this is where I see you guys as parents out here fighting for your kids. And I am so proud of you all. And I know that this is not the end. You have to hold them accountable. If they open tomorrow and there's a month that goes by and there's no violations of what they're doing, keep on them. Keep checking to make sure that they are not violating their responsibility for the community. I know that I've heard that there's a dentist office up here. He had no idea that there was going to be a clinic in here that was going to be having opioid addiction uh, patients here until two weeks ago. And now his, most of his patients are children. And so now that's not just the, it's right here in the building. And that's got to be held, they've got to be held accountable. So um, with that, I just want to thank you all for being here and thank you Vivian for what you've done. Safe Linwood is going to not go away and we have to be vigilant in what she's doing for the community and what we need to hold them accountable. All right, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. And uh, let's call the club. He says care of the public duty. He is so supportive of our cause. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew Patrick Thomas, the chairman of the King County Republican Party, and what a beautiful sight it is today. First, I want to applaud Safe Linwood and Vivian Dong for what you've done the last three weeks. It's nothing short of amazing. So please, and again, give a, give a round to yourself, a clap for yourself. But I, I guarantee this photo on the biggest protest Linwood's ever seen. And that can sit to see this many people concerned about this facility. But the problem is, the state government doesn't care. The one party rule in the state does not care. They think there's no consequences. Well, there is consequences. You can vote out this, this Representative Davis who votes this. You can vote out the mayor of Linwood, this Brazil gal, since she didn't know anything about it. I call hogwash on that one. Your office issues the permit and then you say nothing. Baloney. That's what we call that in the business. Baloney. But, um,. Now we move into the next phase. Uh, it's unfortunate. This is going to be. A, this is a long war. Maybe we lost this battle for them. For them to issue this permit, but it doesn't mean we're giving up. I talked to Vivian the other day, and she goes, "I'm not giving up. I'm just getting started, and we're just getting started." So now we're going to hold them accountable. We see any spike in crime, we're going to hold them accountable. God forbid something happens to one of these children around here. Uh, we just pray for that. That does not happen. But we will hold them accountable. We will be back here. If we don't, if we just see them not live up their obligations, we will be here. We'll never give up. I know none of you will give up on your community, or your children, or uh, or fighting for what's right. So please stay in the fight. Please keep supporting Vivian. Again, you're a hero. Thank you for everything you're doing. And uh, keep at it, folks. Never give up. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Matthew. Um, I, I really didn't want to make this so personal. Like, um, thank you for all the speakers who uh, thank me, but really I didn't think too much about why I started doing this. It's just like um, pure love for kids and community. Um, but um, I want to thank every single one of you for coming out again today. Um, I know it's cold. And uh, many of you have been here with me since the beginning. I see so many familiar faces. 
who have been here with me since the first protest, since the first city council meeting. And even for the past few weeks, I feel like that I've known so many of you so well. And regardless of the outcome, it has been an emotional roller coaster. And it's still a real fight. And I'm glad you are here with me. And I thank you for that. Um, this, this past Thursday, a little bit before 2 p.m., that's when I got the news that the DOH approved the license. I got the news before all the major news outlets reported on this. And at the same time, I was actually organizing our last protest today. And when I got the news, I felt sad, angry, disappointed, and frustrated. Clearly, um, the Department of Health and the city administration didn't care about our concerns. They listened to us, but they didn't care. They kept pointing finger at each other, passing the buck back and forth, pointing each other, but neither of them wanted to claim any responsibilities in this mess. They allowed this to open, despite the fact that they agreed that the problem with the process they knew that the KD lied. They knew that they didn't do any community outreach. They knew the location was problematic. Both for the community, for the children, as well as for the patients themselves. They agreed on that. Yet, they still chose to support this mega billion dollar company who has an incentive to open as many of these centers as possible. Who has no incentive to truly help people to get sober. And to the state officials, to the city officials who had wrongdoing to this, I just want to let you know that we might not have been paying attention to what you did, to what you have been doing. And that's why we have been caught off guard in the first place. But rest assured, we will start paying attention from now on. That's right. And you are elected to represent the people. If you cannot represent the people, if you only do things for your own personal interest and personal judgment, then this is not the right job for you. That's right. Yes. And we will keep working to find a replacement for you. That's right. Since the beginning, our group has been unfairly called names and labeled. I got countless hateful messages. <laughs> Questions. People ask, who is funding you? Who is funding Safe Linwood? People question us, regardless of how many times we emphasize again and again that we are pro-treatment, that we care about the safety of our kids, but at the same time, we also care about the men and women who are seeking treatment. Many of our own group members and volunteers have loved ones who are addicted, or they have served in the community, in this population, for so many years themselves, and we know firsthand how badly they need help. But at the same time, that they need to be kept away from children just because of very poor impulse controls. And they just, these individuals, ignore what we have said again and again. You see, they cannot understand the pure love of a parent to their young children. They cannot understand the pure love of a resident to their community. They cannot understand the responsibilities of citizens to right the wrongs and to seek justice. They just don't understand. And we are here to show them that we refuse their narrative that we refuse to back off, that we will continue to fight for the protection of our community and our kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And moving forward, we will still work very hard to make sure that Acadia and the officials who approve this will be, count, uh, will be held accountable.
normal. Right. But whatever happens, let's hope not one single child will get har harmed. And I pray to God that this does not happen. But if it does, it's on uh, it's on them, it's on Katie, it's on the officials who allow this to open. And we are here to remind them. working on a comprehensive public safety plan with the involvement of Linwood City Police, Police and the Stohamish County Sheriff's Office because many of the residents live nearby actually reside in the unincorporated Stohamish County area. Our volunteers today brought a map of how the borders are defined. You see how the residents feel unsafe. This public safety plan needs to have input from the community members to address our real concerns. And today we actually brought our proposals. Our volunteers have a couple copies that we'll be passing around. For whoever has any input, feel free to let us know. We want to collect all of the input and we'll demand Acadia to have the assurance to put up the protection that we need and we deserve. We will also work with the Linwood City Council and administration to find out what exactly happened in the process. To put up rigid guidelines that will make sure the permit department notify the public, notify the council. Whenever something like this happens, especially if it's related to substance abuse, they should notify the council, notify the planning commission when the permit application was first filed, not months after it was already approved. And the state legislatures, the state representatives, state representative Lauren Davis, I'm so disappointed by her, by read your statement regarding the DOH approval. You didn't acknowledge any wrongdoings, anything, all the gaps in the guidelines from DOH. Why did you mention the fact that Acadia filed for the license application in October, but the DOH didn't put up any information on their website until December, until after the public hearing? Why was there no disclosure from the DOH website for two months? Why didn't you mention that? We will work with the Linwood City Council to push for the state officials to fix that, to put up a means of existing RCWs to govern how these OTP sites work. The public input, city involvement should be required as part of the site selection process. Not when they finish everything, when they are going to open in three weeks. Last but not least, Safe Linwood, our organization completely grassroots, that was born out of pure love and responsibility for our community and our kids. We intend to keep it running going forward, to work on all the things that are outlined. We are here to fight and the, until the end. We are here to make sure our kids and community is protected. And we don't think this is a defeat. That they are allowed to open this is not a defeat. Our effort is not in vain. We have put a lot of pressure on Acadia to at least try to make sure everything is in check when they open. They will know that we will be watching. And I thank you again for being part of this in, in this moment, for being part of this grassroots organization for supporting us. And let's keep moving forward and make sure our kids are safe. Thank you. Thank you everyone. So how did the event how did the event go? 
I think it went great, the weather was nice and we had a good turnout and um, I'm glad that despite the decision from DOH, people still showed up to support and people realized this is going to be a continued fight to protect the community. Um, we will focus on what can be done going forward, what can be done to make sure um, the safety of our kids can be guaranteed and what we can do to push for things in the legislature as well as in the Linwood city zoning code or guidelines that can fix things that went wrong and that can prevent things like this from happening again. Now you said something about a public a uh, bullet points that you wanted for a safety plan. How exactly did you want that access and or the input made? What, and also, what points do you think you would limit the the safety measures on if you would ever have any limitations or restrictions at all? Or where do you see it being going too far, if any input it is? Good question. Uh, we are planning to put it up on our website as well as um, sending it to our members through email, um, putting up our social media account for sure to collect input. We have a lot of members who work in similar field and who have expertise that they can provide. As far as going too far, I think there's always going to be a consensus, right? Uh, we don't want to sound uh, unreasonable and I, I don't think we come across that way as well. This is just pure concern from past experience shared with us from people who lived or worked next to these places. It's very real concern and we want to make sure that the plan addresses that concern. That's it. Okay, and was there any follow-up following this with uh Arcadia or any of the other providers? Uh, yes, we will be meeting Arcadia next week or the week after with a couple of our group members and uh, we'll be um, negotiating with them and to make sure they um, accept or they uh, um, fulfill what is being outlined in the safety plan and make sure that they address our real concerns. Okay. Well, thank you.